Like there's a quote that says he's not confused. He's just not interested. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. That hurts. So I think. Why don't they pick up hints that we are interested? Because you, your hints aren't good enough. <gasps> what do you mean? What is up, guys? We are back better than ever. Mrs. Happy and Healthy. Hey, Mr. Happy and Healthy. The uh, the comments had a little beef with you, us podcast. What did I do? Two podcasts ago. You forgot to mention your last name. Oh, my gosh. You How guys, I'm dare sorry. dare you? Guys, I'm sorry. I've only been married less than three <laughs> and a half months. I forgive you. Thank you. It's okay. Welcome back to the podcast, you guys. Uh, my name is Janine Amapola. And you got Ward. lipstick all over my drink so sorry that's tough i'm sorry he's drinking an energy drink this is my husband caleb ward and we are the wards and this is my co-host how are you doing today guys you guys want to know the it, tea the tea yeah the, this is our seventh time no probably eighth eighth maybe eighth or ninth filming this intro yeah we've never struggled with an intro like this i feel like every time <laughs> today's one of those days when you get married you just like you just like find yourself being rude you're just like on edge for no stupid reason yeah just like uh-huh. you're being rude to me i'm being rude back i don't and know why we're both a little like well, agitated today it's 5 p.m i just spent the last hour with my hour dad. with your dad breaking down a treadmill yeah, um, yeah it's 5 p.m your dad i'll be honest your dad or dad showed up unannounced a little bit yeah, we and, were uh, right about to film. And her dad just showed up and was like, I'm here to fix the treadmill. <laughs> and I was like, I uh, did not want to do this right now. But like, yeah. if you have a father-in-law, you can't tell your father-in-law no. Because he still has that just like father-in-law energy. I tried to. I, so, I tried to for you. I was like, hey, dad, we need like one hour. And I felt bad he was ready He there. had his toolkit. And I was like, I couldn't, I couldn't tell the guy no. So... I spent the last hour and it was like one of those funny things where breaking down the treadmill and I'm like disagreeing with him about how to break it down. But he just, he has this energy where I can't help but submit to his authority. Oh yeah, he does. He's been like that ever since I was little. And so, uh, but yeah, guys, that's where we're at right now. Uh, we still love each other. We're still, oh, yeah. we're still gonna, you know, finish this race strong. But um, I feel like a lot of people don't like, like guys, couples fight. It doesn't mean that you're like getting a divorce, but you fight, you know? Yeah. Like you get your little mini beefs throughout the day. There's a, I feel like the reason why you look at some of these social media couples and you think, oh my gosh, they're, they're perfect. And then, and then something comes out and then people are just shocked. Right. Um, I think that's why it's important. Even if you have a relationship that's like leadership focused, where you're like, you're giving a lot of advice. I think sometimes the insecurity there is like, let's not show, show people are flaws, flaws because they won't want to trust you trust or... you but man that's boast i've said this our our quote for the year is let's boast in our weakness you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> something like that yeah we'll be we'll be like in the living room and i'll be on my spiel about something i'll say a quote and Janine, yeah he's trying to be joe rogan janine will just like laugh at me <laughs> <laughs> you guys have probably seen that on the podcast <laughs> i love guys i love i love a good quote mm-hmm. you, know? you have brought some good ones on this podcast i will i said say. i said something good the other day but i can't remember what it was <laughs> Sick. okay what are we talking about today anyway you guys hi welcome back to the podcast i post every tuesday and kayla comes on a lot and so we're really excited about today's episode because we want to put caleb in the hot seat oh, no. So obviously you guys know this has been a girly cat podcast for years and I've given you guys singleness advice and woman advice and all the things. This time we're putting Caleb in the hot seat and we want to know what goes through guys' brains. Is this going to get me canceled? Probably. No, he's actually helping the girls out. Ask me anything. I have a wealth. Guys, I've, I've lived with homies. I've... I, I have a wealth. I'm like an encyclopedia for like how the male brain works. Okay, but I do. I've been have around to say, every type of male too. That's true, but I do have to say, Caleb is not a representation of every guy because I feel like you could blanket statement I be like every guy hats. thinks this, and then it's not necessarily true. I wear a lot of hats. You do actually, because that's you wear. You do have a lot of hats in your closet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, that's uh, 
Let's but yeah, we're it. excited about today's episode. We asked you guys on Instagram to submit your questions. You guys asked some good ones. So today's episode is going to be helping out the girls. What do men think about? Also, how do they think about it? Also, we're going to answer some questions from our Patreon. Mm-hmm. We just launched a Patreon last week where we're doing two extra uh, Janine and Caleb podcasts a mm-hmm. month. One of them is a kind of a Q&A. The other one's like, we really get in depth with like, we're we're kind of preaching in a way where it's like way more in depth, you know, with YouTube these days and censorship. We, more unfiltered. We wanted to uh, go to a place where we could be more unfiltered and um, not have to worry about advertisement, different things like that. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we're, we're doing that there. And then Janine is also going live for an hour uh, once Live a Bible month. study. The link will be down below. And yes. also really fast, you guys, my book comes out this month. So excited. You guys check it out. Becoming Happy and Healthy comes out March 26th. The link will be down below. You guys can pre-order it. When you do, you'll get five free devotionals in the first chapter already. So go to pre- JaninaMapola.com slash pre-order. Enter in your receipt slash order number in there and it'll automatically be sent to you. So go check that out. All right, let's get into this because you guys popped off we have some good ones in here Let's anything do it. i say will not be held against me in court and you this is not legal advice but this is for your best interest amen amen okay this is a great question it's from someone we actually know okay so she puts in quotation marks you deserve better <laughs> are they insecure or just don't want to try guys i've used that one before like what, you when shady? you're like breaking up with somebody yeah guys the you deserve better quote is something that when you're talking with your bro and you're like hey i think i want to break up with her can you give me some advice on what to say oh bro just tell her tell her uh you deserve better and it's like oh that's that's good and then the guy's sitting there because when you look and like breaking a girl's heart is one of the hardest things i've had my heart broken before i don't think i've broken a heart maybe you broke mine a little i'm just kidding but like i've sat in front of a girl and you know in my mind I maybe believed she deserved better, but like I just wanted to end it to where I could just like move on. Uh, Because in reality is, is like I would the next week I was ready to like date again Mm. and date a girl that, you know, was, I don't know. You know what I mean? What you really wanted. Yeah. It was, it's kind of a way to soften the blow where it's kind of like, Hey, you're so amazing. I'm just not ready. It makes them kind of look like the bad guy when in reality, they don't have the guts to just tell you I'm not interested or I don't like you, in my opinion. There are some times where I was dating girls where we were so incompatible with what we liked in life where I was like, I don't think I'm the guy for you. Uh, We have obviously don't have the chemistry of conversations and things we relate on, the things we like in this life. Our values are different. And so you don't necessarily deserve better, but you deserve someone else. I think those are two primary distinctions between, but like the, you deserve better. It depends if he's like a raging, you know, he watches porn every single night and he's like, he's a wild boy Mm -hmm. who is a player. He's a player. He's getting drunk. He's doing drugs. It's like, if that guy, if you know that about him and he's going, you deserve better then you probably do. Yeah. But for the most part that you deserve better what I would do if I were you as a girl and a guy goes, you deserve better, I would ask him why. Yeah, that's like, a good what, why, why do I deserve better? Yeah. Who do I deserve better? What it is about you that makes you not think that you deserve me? Put the question back on him, and if he can't answer that question, he's just lying to you. Ooh, bar, baby. That's good. Okay, why don't they pick up hints that we are interested? Because you, your hints aren't good enough. <gasps> what do you mean? Like the hint is you stared at me, or the hint is... You complimented me. You complimented or you, you know, maybe liked a photo. It, now, if you're responding to stories and you are, you've told a friend who's told him and you've been so like, there's a quote that says he's not confused. He's just not interested. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. That hurts. So I think That's tough. if you know, you've put yourself out there to where he, it, the only thing that would, he's just an idiot and doesn't take a hint. That's very rare Mm -hmm. because if a guy likes you, he's trying to find any reason to, to like any, like any door that could be cracked open to like run in. Now you didn't, you didn't give me, you followed me on Instagram, but for me, I didn't know like that follow for you might've been a hint, Mm -hmm. but that follow for me was like, Oh, maybe she just followed me because we had friends of friends. So it's hard to tell what to read into and what not to read into. 
So are you saying that you think a girl should be more like blatant and obvious about it? Like someone even asked here, like, um, well, basically, yeah. Like, should you just put yourself out there and be obvious or should you make it more subtle? I would, I, I would make it subtle. It definitely depends. Give him a chance to pursue you. If he's not pursuing you after a couple of weeks, few weeks after you've dropped some hints um, and it's just killing you and you need to know that there's no shot, I would just reach out, DM him. Honestly, I'd message him and just say, hey, I know this might be weird, but I wouldn't say no to going out to coffee with you. Really? Yeah. Okay, that's awesome because this girl has said me said to me, yeah. will a guy approach you if you like them or do you do they expect a green light from you first? No, I, there's been times in my life where, I mean, I had an ex-girlfriend where we were at church and I was interested and I just w walked up to her and I was like, would you like to go on a date? And she was like, sure. And so there is times where guys should, should put themselves out there if they're interested. A lot of times he will pursue you, but some guys are shy. Mm -hmm. Some guys have been hurt before. Some guys, maybe two rejection. weeks. Rejection. Maybe I have some bros who are married now, but there for a while they were on like a streak of rejection. So I had a buddy who he like rejection, 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 rejection. And then randomly a girl hit him up and was like, Hey, I wouldn't say no to seeing you again, essentially is what mm. kind of what happened. And he was like, great. And they went out and now they're married. And so that's awesome. If you're going to work out, you're going to work out. You don't have to, if you land him because you played a strategic game, you're eventually going to lose the game. Because you have to maintain that game. Yeah, you have to maintain the game. I get it. In the beginning, you got to play a little bit. Yeah. Don't come across as like you are obsessed with him too quickly. Well, I feel like it's like two two different camps. It's like the overly needy obsessed, like, oh my gosh, I'm obsessed with you. You're DMing him. You're liking everything. Or you're playing the game like, I'm not interested. I'm too cool for you. Where he's probably like, I don't even think this girl likes me. Yeah. One thing I would avoid like wholeheartedly is getting too many people in the mix. If you're in a friend group and you tell one person, that one person tells, you could accidentally be putting a lot of pressure on him mm -hmm. towards now the whole friend group thinks that there's something going on and there's nothing worse than that as a guy to not, now he might ask you out of pressure and it, it's not coming from his own like willingness or his own like desire. And so if it's going to happen, be patient, give it time. Don't talk to too many people. Um, and yeah, at the end of the day, just reach out to him. I like that. So it, you're pro girl, make the first move. No, just drop I, think, the hanky. I think the guy should make the first move. But she should drop the hanky. Yeah, but you don't, after a certain point, you're going to lay in bed at night wondering mm -hmm. because the next day he might be wiped up. <gasps> That's facts. Yeah. Because I feel like a lot of guys are so scared to make the first Listen. move because they're like, she would never be interested in me. And he's waiting for you to kind of be like, no, I am. So maybe that's your sign. He ladies. might. The reason why I'm saying it's okay, because he might not know. He might not know. Like for me, mm -hmm. I, did, I did not at the time realize I had a chance with you because uh, I didn't think you knew I existed. And you took that first step of following me on Instagram. And then I, liking some of your And stuff. liking some of my stuff. So that allowed me to take a step forward. Like the beginning part of dating is just like, yeah, trying to figure out who's taking what step okay my man's dropping bars over here this is just my opinion I, th yeah. I think we've i think we've mistaken we've gotten too like general i know i think we've gotten too black and white where he's a a christian man has to pursue 24 7 and you know and i and i think that that's <laughs> important that guys should pursue we don't want a guy passivity like mm -hmm. and men but sometimes you know things don't work out as perfectly as you'd want them to there is some girl dropping some crazy things in here. Okay. Why <laughs> can we? That's just weird, dude. Okay. This girl did ask you a question and I think she, she's kind of low key roasting you. Okay. Do you care about your wife or just know it's a duty you have to do? What? Do you care about your wife? Dude, I will sometimes look at my wife and I'll cry because I care about her that much. Y'all are crazy for that one. Like, no. This man cares so much. Genuinely, like, she's my best friend. I'll be sitting there. We, we, you guys should hear us talk to each other. Yeah, it's kind of uh, funny. We're so candid with each other, good and bad sometimes, because mm -hmm. we tell each other the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, but no, she's my best friend. We do literally everything together. I'm the kind of guy, like, I like my guy time, but I'm kind of like, babe, come join the boys. Like, I'm cool with that. That's so fun. Yeah. Um, but, dude. I think maybe she's mistaking it from our recent reels where you're like, 
meet the staff or like you have to bring me water. Like I think they're mistaking it thinking that we're being serious on those reels. It's so funny because the reels are funny. They're yeah. like comedy purposed. And so if you take them too seriously. Yeah, you should not take that too seriously. Yeah. <laughs> You're mistaking But us. some of it's true. Like you pick up my socks a lot. Yeah, I pick up a lot for you. Yeah. But you do so much for me too. It's like, it's not like a, you do this and I do this. Like it's give and take. That's yeah. so funny. Now there are times where I am upset with you and I'm like, gosh, you're being annoying, but it doesn't mean I don't love you. <laughs> yeah. There's a spiritual connection with your wife. If you do it in the right way and you meet with the Lord every day and you pray for this covenant, like the relationship is deeper than just a surface level marriage. It's like, it's really God ordained. It's prayed over and it's, it's spiritual. I love that, Bubby. Okay. The next question is how long does it take for the guy to know he found the girl? Five minutes. Nuh uh. Very quick. For real? It, it, again, this is me. Like, I never, any girl I dated, I knew we were going to date on the first date. Mm. Every girl I didn't date, I knew it, like, the, almost the, the first, within the first five minutes. Wow. Every single time, you were the first girl where it was so overwhelming, where I was like, I'm either going to marry that girl or like my heart is going to get broke. Oh, but and, but I, it, I'm not going to be black and white about it because I do know guys who struggled with their feelings. Like I have a guy friend that like he struggled for a whole year and now they're so happily married and and they love each other so much, but he struggled for a while. I don't want to say that for all cases if that's, that's you, but what I would say for most guys, it's a lot quicker than the girls. I, I kind of agree. I feel like most stories I've heard, the guy knew like date one. A guy needs to be in it and he needs to go, that's my girl. That's because that pursuit is so important. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have it in the beginning, it's harder because like in the beginning, it's supposed to come natural. And like later on, it becomes a choice. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know even in the beginning how to pursue, it's kind of hard to like turn that switch on. If that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. I don't love that question because I could see some girls over reading that yeah. and going into the date and going, well, what do you think? What do you, what, what are you yeah, thinking? Am what I your you wife? Thinking? Am yeah. I your wife? What do you, you, I, I heard all these things saying guys know within the five, first five or 10 minutes. I think within the first five or 10 minutes, a guy knows if there's going to be a really good physical attraction there where yeah. he's like really attracted to you. And through that, I think does help a guy in the beginning stages know if he wants to pursue this relationship. Yeah. I feel like there's, it's a case by case situation because yeah. I can think of some of my friends relationships where maybe, you know, he wasn't interested and she wasn't eventually he came around and then he was like, you know, this is my girl. So it's hard to kind of Blake and statement. Yeah. Like that. It's just not my story with you because I knew immediately. Yeah. I mean, it's um, I. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I feel bad because this girl was not asking these questions to you directly. <laughs> she was asking them generally about men. She okay. was saying like, as general in men, mm -hmm. do men view women mostly as objects and why are men so horny? She wasn't saying you specifically. Yeah. I, yeah. I feel bad. I apologize. <laughs> do uh, Why do women view... Why do, do men mainly view women as objects? Depends on the guy. Some guys do. Mm -hmm. Some guys... I, you see them, you know, I've, I know those guys who view, they're so lustful. So there's a spirit of lust within every single, every man is visual. Every man has the thorn, his, most men have the thorn in his side of being attracted to women. And so how you deal with that is, could be healthy or it could be unhealthy. Just like with food, some people are, know they love donuts and know they love bad food that's really bad for them, but they don't eat it. Mm -hmm. And so over time, like it doesn't become difficult for them not to eat those foods anymore because you you're free from it. It's not, you're not a slave to it. Um, and so some guys never get a hold of that from a very early age. Guys who get introduced to pornography at 10, 11, 12 years old, they continue this path of just being visual, being very, they're, become so desensitized so they're having to you know go to these very extreme ends of like pornography and hookup culture mm -hmm. and it's where they don't really necessarily not that they view women as objects but they have a really they have an addiction they well, have conditioned themselves yeah they have the, but there are misogynistic guys out there mm -hmm. um 
who are even Christian who just go, no, women, blah, 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 you know. Yeah. They have this idea. But this like gender role on her. Yeah. Well, I also feel like the problem with pornography, and we actually have an entire episode coming up eventually with an ex-porn star. We're really excited about this one because we'll be able to talk more about this. But it's like, you, how can you not watch pornography and just view this woman as an object you have no connection you don't know her name you don't know her story her family her upbringing you know nothing you see her as an object as a mean to get off and that's really sad but i wouldn't say that's most men but i would say a majority of men that are not walking with god probably don't care about a woman's actual heart and soul yeah you know it's very difficult because do i think me looking at you now that we're married and like babe like i'm so attracted to you like you're so beautiful like you don't ever look at me after I say that and go, you're just looking at me as an object. <laughs> I hope you know, not. you have to be able to, you know, what, you see what I'm saying? Totally. I think there's a healthiness to like, yeah, you're not an object, but he is attracted to you, but that doesn't mean you're an object. Yeah. Just like if, we, you know, there's a double standard here. Women talk about men all the time and they talk about, oh, look at his abs, six, three, you know, only day I, I want I want a tall king. I, and it's like, okay, you view him as an object. Mm-hmm. So we both do it to each other. We both have things that we want in a person. It doesn't mean you view them as objects, but you have things that are your preferences. Yeah. The, the things that you want in a person. So I don't think that means they're, you know, you're, you're viewing them as an object. But I do think a lot of guys are just very, 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 very hyper, hypersexual. At the point. That's all they care about in a relationship. Mm, you want to avoid those guys. I can look at you no matter what point of the day because I'm so connected to you and I love you and you're my wife um, that I I don't, I would say when I, maybe in my younger days in high school, I would always just like, okay, what does she look like today? What does she look like today? Mm. Okay, she looks good now. Okay, no, she doesn't look good now. And because I was watching pornography in my life, I was just so consumed by my what I was looking at Instead of really looking at, and you're so beautiful on the outside, no matter what, but like, I would never look internally about their spirit and how they carried themselves Mm -hmm. because I was so focused on the outer appearance. And so you, I'm obsessed with you. I'm obsessed. My man is just so wise over here. I'm not, I, I, I don't even, you're speaking really well where I'm like, I'm so proud of you. Thank you. (laughs) So you still love me when I look like a rat in the morning? I see. I don't think you look like a rat. I wake <laughs> up and I look at you and I and I and I think to myself, I can't believe I'm married. Oh, he I, wants to snuggle every morning. It's yeah, so cute. You're you're my girl. You know, Aww, I love you, my girl. Okay, the next question is great because you're talking about how men are visual, women as objects, blah blah blah. Are guys actually distracted by women's shoulders? Because we grew up hearing this all the time. Don't show your shoulders. Men are attracted to your ankles and your shoulders. And it was like this uh, kind of toxic modesty push on women where you were like, oh my gosh, I can't show anything. Is it true that men are actually attracted to girls' shoulders? Tank tops. I'm looking at your shoulders right now. And um, I guess like if your shoulders, if like your shirt came back a little more and I could see. Like if it was spaghetti strap or like a lower top. Yeah. Like for you, I mean. What's the, I don't understand the question. Like think, okay, you know, like in high school or like church camp, like girls were always told th- to not wear tank tops. I think the reason why they were doing that, because it's like, okay, if we get them to cover their shoulders, that means everything is covered. We don't even have to worry about them mm-hmm. showing anything. So it's kind of just like eliminating everything. Um, do I think shoulders are attractive? I mean, I, think- I mean, I do feel like more skin. Like if I was to wear like a really thin spaghetti strap top and it's a little bit lower, like you'd probably be like, oh, whoa, skin. Yeah? No? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. I, for you, yeah. Okay, but like think about in high school. Go back to high school. Were, were you more like attracted if you saw a girl wearing like a tank top? Probably, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, like, yeah, of course, if more things are showing and it's provocative in a way, it's like as a younger guy – Mm-hmm. maybe hard maybe i could understand the dress codes yeah because girls don't understand what it's like being a guy especially at that age when hormones are going crazy <laughs> your elbow is attractive to an 18 my pinky toe yes no. <laughs> <laughs> okay this is so lead another leading question what is your view on modesty when a woman re- wears revealing clothing is it truly a stumbling block so like in your eyes you know because like i talked about modesty in my latest episode and i kind of got a little bit of flack for it which is fine because i basically was saying like you know men are looking online and looking at girls that are revealing themselves more 
for you when you weren't married and you were still maybe struggling with pornography or whatever, was that genuinely a stumbling block for you? What was a stumbling block? Yeah, I remember being around some guy friends and we we're like all like godly dudes and all trying to hold each other accountable and, you know, not watch pornography and watch our eyes throughout the day. And we'd get so frustrated when we go to the gym and girls would be wearing, you know, things that were very hard not to look at because they would be right in front of you. And you're like, you're not trying to look, but it's like, it's there. And you don't know, no guy wants to be that guy who's like looking at a yeah. girl at the gym, but it's super frustrating. And I remember being around guy, our guys were like, why do girls do this to us? And that might be controversial because yeah. girls might just be like, that's your problem. That's, look your, away. that's your issue. But guys are visual. It's hard for a guy you're being dumb. Like it's hard for a guy who doesn't have self-control not to look. Now, for me, now now that I'm a married man, when I go to the gym, I am very cautious of like what's in front of me and I'm try I don't even want other girls to get the satisfaction that I'm looking at them. So like I really try to keep my head down uh but sometimes you accidentally look at someone mm -hmm. and you're it's like oh i'm not it's like mid squat it's like it's like oh i'm not looking at you but like you're, you're right in front of me mm -hmm. and so i do think girls have a have a part to play in this as just like hey i'm not asking you to wear jean shorts to the gym but just like be mindful of like guys mm -hmm. out there who aren't trying who aren't trying to stumble if you're in front of them and you know that you know, you, what you're wearing could potentially cause them to stumble. I'm like, maybe be mindful of that. But for me, I'm a guy. So for me, I'm never going to sit here and say what you should or should not wear. Ultimately, that's between you. That's between your discernment and your people and your life. So if you're a girl, wear, wear genuinely, wear whatever you want. That's between you and God, your people, your girls. Um, so I, I don't ever feel comfortable to be like, it's your job. Because for a guy, like I wear a tank top to the gym sometime. Mm -hmm. That could make some girls stumble hey, so i'm put those guns out in i'm the gym. not i'm not going to mm -hmm. be a hypocrite and say that it's only the girl's responsibility mm -hmm. but i do think guys have a more difficult time of controlling their eyes than girls do for the most part yeah um, i mean i talked about this and i know i did end up getting a dm about it because some girl was like yeah. well what do you say about like workout clothing and for me i've been trying to even work on this myself because i used to only wear like sports bras and I never tried to do it in a sexual way like it was never to be like everyone look at me it was just most comfortable but I'm in my own journey of this even like you've noticed I probably wear more tank tops instead of sports bras and I mm -hmm. wear uh, especially with you at the gym I wear a little thing around my waist because like there is other guys at my personal gym I don't have to worry about it it's just me and a couple of girls working out but I'm at when I'm at your gym I'm like I get uncomfortable almost I'm like oh my gosh they're looking at my butt like I yeah. feel uncomfortable for some reason so I feel like we both have a part to play and like let's hopefully help each but other I, out I get it from the fitness industry because like you're working out you're just, sweating you're sweating and you know those who really care about improving their muscles sometimes it helps wearing a shirt or an outfit that you can see your muscles contract easier you're there for the workout um, but I do think a lot of people go to the gym for attention. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, I'm going to wear what I want to wear for attention. And you get the attention a lot of times from guys. Yeah. I do think it's a lot about your intentions though. Yeah. Cause like, I don't go to the gym being like, everyone look at me. Like I really just, I feel confident in that. I still like to wear sports bras, so don't get me wrong, but I never want to do it in a flashy way. Like for example, the other day we were on a run and I was wearing a sports bra on the video and I decided not to post it. And I was like, oh, man, I don't want to preach the wrong message. But I wasn't trying to be yeah. bad, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's always, that's the hardest question This to is the, modesty is so tough. Especially being a guy. I was like sweating. Well, and a well, Christian. Yeah. Because, like, you know, we could post something and someone could be like, oh, you're being immodest. Or everyone has their almost their own viewpoint of modesty. Yeah. So it's kind of iffy. Yeah. But it's helpful to know from a guy's perspective what you guys are thinking. Okay. The next question is, how do they like you one day and then not the next? And she put like a little melting, like a, this emoji where she's like, ugh. I, I saw a podcast on this. It was our buddy JJ. It was a similar question. I called myself a godly man for, you know, all high school and college. And I would do this sometimes where I would tell a girl I liked her. And then the next day I'd wake up and I just was like, I'm not ready for this. I'm not ready for a relationship. I don't think it's going to work out. I would get so in the moment. And I genuinely thought this girl was cute and 
if everything was working out and then I'd wake up the next day and I was like, I just want to be single. I'm not savage. I'm not into this anymore. Um, and I'm like, I wish, I wish wholeheartedly. Cause right now I can't even think of the girls I've done that to. It's not like a ton. Um, but I wish I could go back and like apologize and tell every girl like, Hey, like I'm sorry that, and then JJ said this, like, I'm sorry that I was the only representation of Christ that you might have like ever seen. And I called myself a Christian and I was loose with my words. I, I only cared about myself. I didn't do that a ton, but there definitely were times in my past where I would get caught up in the moment. I'd be on a date and I'd be like, I like you so much. I, I think I want to be official. And then, you know, the next day or a week goes by, I'm like, oh crap, I overcommitted. Mm. And I think that comes with time, that comes with maturity. Um, and if a guy is doing that to you and he's going back and forth, run, run so fast. He's not ready. He will do that in marriage. I've seen that guys do that in marriage. He'll do that in engagement. Um, and so don't let a guy like that play with your heart uh, who is constantly going back on his feelings towards you. Um, yeah, it's a bummer. It's a bummer that I even did that in my mm -hmm. past. Um, yeah. Gosh. I mean, I've been in the position where a guy did that to me, but he never like said, he never overcommitted. So I think it depends on which camp you're in. Cause yeah. like I went on a date with a guy and he was like, he was very interested in going on a date with me and kept asking and asking. Finally, I was like, okay, I'll go on a date. Went on a date and never heard from him again. And mm -hmm. I was like, sick. <laughs> that sucks. So what can happen though, and this is what sucks. There were times where I was talking to these girls and and I'd be into it. And then they would do, it's the ick. They would do one thing. Or you go on the date and you're like, oh, I'm not actually interested. Yeah. Like now I know who you are and I'm not really interested. But there were, there were times where I would date a girl for a month, two months. And uh, maybe not two months, maybe closer to a month or so. We would go on that ninth date and they would do something and I would be like, uh, mm -hmm. I don't think I can deal with that the rest of my life. Like that is a quirk that you do. And I don't want you to feel bad for that quirk. Yeah. But that's a quirk that I don't want to have to deal with. My friends used to tell me, Caleb, you're too picky. Like, mm -hmm. like certain guys, but certain things. Mm -hmm. Janine was the first girl in my life that <laughs> there, Dramatic. Were, there was nothing that you did that caused me to get the ick to where like, I wasn't running away. <laughs> it was so weird. I'm dead. Usually there would be something that I'd just scratch my head. I'd be like, oh, no. <laughs> Stop. What? I'd be sitting there. I'm like, oh, I made an error. <laughs> I made I made a genuine error. <laughs> I'd be driving home after a date and I'm going, dead. yeah, this ain't going to work. <laughs> <laughs> are you sure? Are you sure I'm the guy for you? That's when it starts. Yeah, that's, that's, when, you, that's, that's, when, you, that's when it starts. When a you guy's deserve like, better. You deserve better. Like you're driving like two hours. It's like. You're sitting there and talking. I love you, babe. Like, I, you're amazing. I think you're the girl for me. And then it's like two hours later, <laughs> and it's like, huh? <laughs> this, uh, this, this uh, took a slight different turn than I was <laughs> expecting. Hey, I need to go home and wash you my start, feet. <laughs> you start trying to uh, create. You start trying to shift the narrative of the of the entire relationship. Mm -hmm. And when you start to like overthink it, and then you're like. Yeah. The responses start getting slower. You start texting back a lot less. Y'all are mean. You start pulling back. Mean. But you don't want to hurt them. And then what's also hard is when you're dating in a friend group, you don't want other people to hate you. Because guys, facts. I'll tell you what, mm -hmm. when guys in a relationship, they're dead to the ecosystem. The ecosystem that they live in with other people and the community that they're dating in, if they if this girl is well liked and they she has a lot of girlfriends, you break up with her because you overcommitted or you, mm -hmm. you 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 screwed her or whatever, you're dead. You're a dead meat. You can't go back to that church. <laughs> you you can't go back to that same coffee shop. Gosh, I hope that we can all date better to where you don't no, have to do that. No, because guys this is why guys are so, you know, picky about who they date is because once you once they break up with you then you've killed their reputation. Everybody's going to know. I yeah. have I have buddies who, um, you know, were trying to go on dates. And all of a sudden, this this girl who just asked them on a date, talking to other people, going, oh, all these people hate you. Mm. You know, all these girls think you're horrible. Mm. And it's like, I just broke up with them. That's all that happened. Yeah. Okay, a lot of people really want to know when you meet a girl, like what makes you think that she's like wifey? 
Like, what's like a green flag where you're like, that's what you're looking for. That's wifey. Confidence. 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 Really? Like, I'm not talking arrogance. I'm talking like you can take care of your self-confidence. Okay. You can take care of like you got compartments in your car. You got <laughs> you. Uh, I don't know, man. Like everything. You got cup holders for your cup holders. What? Like, I know that. If we got married, you'd have a little toothbrush holder for me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I'm kind of joking. But my, I, I do think there's a layer of confidence that a guy's looking for and a little bit of spice of, can you joke around? Can you take a joke? Can you... Dish it back. Can you banter with me? Are you going to be a yes woman? Are you just going to agree with everything I say? Mm. I need some pushback. I need you to challenge me. I need you to hold me accountable in a way where... Or you, I, I need you to see something in me that I maybe not see in myself. Um, I think those are real key indicators of wifey. I think this is also huge, like your reputation in Christ. And do people view you as a godly woman? And do you does your Instagram account show that? Mm-hmm. Or am I going to see, am I going to have to tell, am I going to have to worry about showing my family your Instagram account? Because you mm-hmm. got some, you got some things on there where you got dudes constantly mm-hmm. commenting on your stuff, because and you're flirting with, you know, you, I don't know. I, I think no guy. If you have a lot of guy, if I open your Instagram, you got a lot of guy friends. It's fine. You had a lot of guy friends, mm-hmm. but you know they were they weren't all over my Instagram. They, they, they were yeah. he, they were healthy relationships. But like, do you have a new best friend every single day, every single week, like? These are like small examples of like red flags that I see. I, I I saw in girls where they didn't have the same friends all the time. They had a lot of falling outs with other girls. Um, I might be getting into some trouble here, um, mm-hmm. but, but this is the real. Or team. they had a new. They posted a new guy every three to four months, and it's like, gosh, they get a new boyfriend. At, you know, mm-hmm. so like. Don't post your guy friend until you know that you know that you know that you know that you know. That's my yeah. Hope. Someone asked you actually about that. Yeah. Like, when can you? When should Hang you on. post it? I, I want to keep on the wifey thing real quick. Yeah, because I want to make sure I no, ultimately, yeah, keep going. ultimately love God. Like you, 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 if he knows you love God more than him, there is a safe, there is a peace in a guy's heart. If he's a Christian or not, and he should be a Christian, but if he is a Christian, he knows you love God so much he sees that live out in your life if he also sees you passionate about something oh man she uh she got this nonprofit that she's working on on the side and she's passionate about it or she coaches volleyball on the weekdays and she's passionate about that or she goes every three months she goes to yosemite and she hikes or every three month three months you know she runs a a half marathon (laughs) if you're someone who doesn't have a hobby you only go to work and you come home and you go to sleep. That's okay. But go go find something that might find that to where a guy there's a talking point. There, everyone has hobbies. Mm-hmm. Whether we do the hobby or not is is the question. So g- go find that hobby. Not telling yourself to just do this for a guy, but I'm yeah. just like you, be guy, genuine about a it. A guy wants to be with a girl who is interesting, where he's sitting at dinner and he's like, oh man. This this girl's fascinating, and you can like brag about her, right? Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, because I feel like when we sat down, there were a lot of things that like I was like, I love this, I love that. This is what I love. I love you. You know, <laughs> am I gonna get in trouble for the things? I'm saying? Not at all. No, this okay. is real tea. And you know, okay. I've I mean, I've kind of shared this to you guys in my own episodes. Um, like, you know, guys not gonna want a girl that's just waiting around for you to marry him. Like, he yeah. he wants to see you doing things. Like, your I think passions are really important, and so. Mm-hmm. I think those are awesome. I think I've kind of said those on my own way, but it's good to hear it from a man. Let's keep going. Yeah, no, this is awesome. Honestly, I feel like we're going to have to make a part two of this. I think so. Because y'all are y'all are asking some fire questions and you're giving some bomb answers. My boyfriend told me he's not the romantic type. Is that a red flag? Eh. Oh, gosh. Eh. Immediately. No. I hate that dude. I can't stand <laughs> that dude. Oh, I'm not romantic. Okay. You will it, be for the girl you is like. Is he going to go like. make money the rest of his life where that's all he cares about is making money? Because if you're not romantic, you're putting your energy in other things. And so it's like, what do you genuinely care about? I would ask him that. I would say, oh, you're not romantic? Okay, so what do you like? What do you like to do? Oh, you like 
you're romantic about woodworking. You like to carve the wood and you like to, to <laughs> lay the pencils down and, and make your cabinets. What are you romantic? Oh, your sports. You love LeBron James and you are so romantic about Kevin Durant and Steph Curry. Oh, you love beer. You just love the way the brewery and the IPAs, you know, drip down. Or, or you love you love coffee because you love the notes of the cherry espresso and the chocolate. <laughs> it's like, okay, you're not romantic towards me, but you're romantic towards these other things in your life or your job and you make awesome. money. It's like, okay, you are romantic. You just you're just prideful. Oh, wait, hold on. That was a bomb. I've never seen. I don't care what anyone says, and you can come for me. I have never seen a marriage at least look happy if the man doesn't romance, romance his wife. Oh my god! If you are a marriage and it's a recliner marriage, you know what a mm-hmm. recliner marriage is? I do. It's where you got one recliner on one corner and the other recliner on the other, and that's to me a marriage that I don't want because now the older generation they like their lazy boys, but. Honestly, for us, it's like let's let's sit together, you know, cheek to cheek, and <laughs> and be with each other. And you know, I'm not saying if you have a recliner, you don't have a good marriage because there's some good marriages out there. But no, I think I think he should be romantic. He should romance you, just mm-hmm. like you should romance him. You should figure out the things that he likes. And there's a difference. There's a difference between like I'm a hopeless romantic. So that's a bar that other guys won't get to. And that's okay. I'm not saying he has to like do all these crazy things, but if he doesn't know the things that you enjoy and the things that you like, tell him that. And it's okay that that's not his like natural ability. He can work towards it. I forget to be romantic sometimes. So do I. And that's okay. But you know, he should figure out a way to spoil you. And just like you should, do him so i hope that makes sense that was so good baby i really like that okay there's a lot of questions about why are men so bad at their feelings and sharing how they feel like why are they so scared to open up and share because you'll use it against us really yeah girl this is why i tell guys a lot of times do not open up and show your feelings until you are ready for her to potentially use it against you no. Yeah, I, I for sure, I, I 100% believe that. Not the whole like, oh, men are just, they don't express themselves. They're not taught about that. No. Toxic masculinity. I, I think when guys, when guys open up, it does get used against them. Um, but I will say you have to be okay with that. But it really has nothing to do with like them just being, because no, women are so much more vulnerable and they open up guys more. Guys would open up if we thought we could. And for me and your relationship, I knew I could. I was yeah. safe there. I knew that if you, you know, <laughs> did use it against me, it would be in a healthy way where it's like, when I say use it against me, I mean, if I'm saying, babe, I'm always tired. Like, I feel like I, you know, I don't sleep well at night and I'm opening up about that. Like, I feel like that's affecting my mental health. And then I'm drinking a caffeine energy drink. And you're going six o'clock going, babe, the reason why you can't sleep at night it's because of your your ability to because you're drinking energy drinks. Stop drinking energy drinks. And you're gonna drink. You're gonna sleep better. You like last night you know, drinking coffee before bed. Yeah. <laughs> so that's you using something that I opened up against. Ah. Uh. Um. And so that's why a lot of guys don't want to be vulnerable because they don't want the accountability or they don't want um they don't want to be like babe I have trust issues mm-hmm. and then a girl to be like. You're just controlling. You're just a, a control freak. You, you're insecure. Like mm-hmm. that's using what I just opened up against me. And a guy needs to be okay with that potentially happening. But do you think that it's because a lot of guys just want to put like, they want to seem like they're all tough and manly and strong. I have it all together. I'm the leader. Do you think that has anything to do with it? Yes. Um, like I, it's like men are conditioned to show no yeah, weakness. But I think it depends on the relationship. So I think like three to six months in, No girl wants a guy, for the most part, just like, I think in a guy's head, we don't want to come with you to all of our problems before we know, like, you're ready and I'm ready for you to see every part of me. Mm -hmm. That's hard. Uh, It's hard. Every guy, every girl wants to be taken care of. But I, I, I'll be vulnerable. There were times in our, in our relationship where I was just like at my, I was just emotionally drained 
and I was, I was struggling, not even about a relationship, but I was just struggling. I was, I felt lonely. I felt, I felt confused and anxious and wasn't sleeping well. And I just like, I felt like I hit like a place where I was just like exhausted Mm -hmm. and you just hugged me and, and not once did you use, like use it against me in a way, but I think it was still hard for me leaving that night going crap i just showed her weakness mm. um that it, and it's like it's hard because you know every girl says they want it until it happens well, i was about to say most girls want it i don't I, I think it depends i think i think a healthy girl i i don't think i think majority of girls no you you are an exception but a lot of girls that i knew prior didn't want that i think it depends on the girl because some girls are the fixer uppers. They see weakness. They're like, I can fix him. I can help him. I can be like his mama and I can hug him and make all his problems go away for him. And they want to treat their boyfriend as like their child. That's not good for some girls that are like, so used to the macho man, they see that as weakness. And they're like, you're giving me the ick because you show me weakness. I'm out. I think there's gotta be a balance. If, if your man opens up to you, just, I'm just telling you not to use it against him Mm -hmm. or he won't open up again. Yeah. And that, that's what I'm saying. I hope I'm not confusing here because I don't believe a man. I think a man should open up, but I think there are healthy ways to do it and in a, in a balance to it all because mm-hmm. no girl wants a guy who is overly emotional. Yeah. But I do think there is seasons where a man needs to be able to be emotional. Um, and so I would just say invite your boyfriend or your husband to Hey, how are you doing? Like, mm-hmm. Genuinely. Like actually sit down and go, genuinely, oh, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. And you're like, no, babe, no, you're not good. Don't don't force it at him, but mm-hmm. create a safe place because eventually it comes out. Eventually it does happen. But I'm saying this to you, if he's not opening up, he doesn't trust you mm. fully. Yeah. Because he's been hurt in the past. He's been made fun of. Honestly, uh, bad advice is a big reason why guys don't open up is because other guys tell them not to because they're like, oh, don't do it because, you know, they're going to use it against you. Yeah. Um, That's often the advice to why guys don't. Okay. Thanks for sharing, bubs. My answers aren't what I necessarily believe. I'm just telling you what, why guys, I think, do the things they do. do. That's good. I'm going to ask you two more questions and then we're going to do a part two because this is just too good. There's so many good questions in here. Is SEX really always on their mind? No, but it comes up. Okay. Before when you were single, this is probably a little TMI. Mm -hmm. Was it always on your mind? No, I mean, (laughs) no. I mean, there were times I was at work and work was on my mind for four or five hours. And then, you know. I think it depends on the guy, right? Yeah. But you got stuff to do. Like I'm driving right now. I have to, I'm in traffic. I'm focused on traffic right now. I'm not thinking about sex. But don't you think about, don't guys think about it a lot? They say like, oh, guys thinking about it like seven times a day or something crazy. I think now that we're married and of course doing it, I don't think about it near <laughs> as much as I used to. Um, and so like. When you were single? When I was single, definitely way more. But it wasn't in like a. It wasn't in like a crazy way. I'm just like sitting here daydreaming all the time. Okay. Uh, now there are different guys who are just hornier than a than a screwdriver, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but where did uh, you get that? I just made that up. That's freaking uh, hilarious. There are those guys. So there are anomalies. But you girls are horny. Probably you girls. You girls. You girls be wild. Yeah, there's sometimes. a stigma. I think that a lot of people think like girls don't have a sex drive, and I just don't think that's true. And I think some girls are shamed for it because they are like, am I, am I ra- wrong because I have this drive? And it's like, no, but just use it in marriage. I do think there Christians have, we have not done good with men, especially mm-hmm. within how to, how to control. And like when, when these hormones hit you at 16 years old and you're a man, you aren't prepared for it. Like I, 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 girls don't get this when you are a 16 year old man it might for some men it start younger mm-hmm. it is like one random day you have all these feelings and everyone's beautiful and or for me just girls every girl is beautiful you know and it's just you it's hard 
your brain, what I explained to it, like as a 16, 17 year old laying in bed. And if you, if you watch pornography and you are a young man, you know, like before a Marvel movie starts and like, there's like all these graphic pictures, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like that's what's running through your brain as a, as a younger guy. Gosh, um, and it's horrible. just like that testosterone is hitting you. You're, you're just, you're just like, it's, we're kind of getting very like explicit here yeah. and I apologize. Um, but it, it's hard to control that. And I feel like the church hasn't done a good job of, cause we put, we've attached shame to those feelings and sin to those feelings. I feel like it's morally neutral as a guy to go, okay, I feel this way. Now, how do I, what do I do with this? Mm -hmm. And instead we, we've created a system where guys hide it, they suppress it and it manifests into something a lot larger than it would if a guy just came forward to somebody and go, Hey, this is what I'm dealing with. Mm -hmm. How do I go about it? And someone going, okay, cool. Same. S just like millions of other dudes. Um, and let's, let's, let's just be honest with each other. I love that, Bobby. That's so good. Okay, the last question that people are wanting to know is do looks really matter? You're getting me you're gonna you're trying to get me in trouble. No, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to help women understand the male brain and the perspective and things that they should think about. Cause like I feel like nobody wants to talk about these. Okay, here's you know? what, okay, here's what, it it's up to you. Um, do looks matter to you? It doesn't matter what I think. If you're if you're a girl and I ask you, does it, do looks matter? Do you want to date a guy where you get your boxes checked off of what you deem as attractive? We all have types. We all have different things that we like. Mm -hmm. For us, we weren't necessarily each other's type in a way. I thought you were so beautiful mm -hmm. and it didn't matter. I didn't have a type. I had a normal girl that I dated, but it wasn't like, I wasn't always saying that that's who I was only going to date. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, but I did want to date someone who I thought was beautiful. I think it's important to be able to cherish the person you're with. And if you're dating someone and you don't find them attractive, I'm kind of like, hey, man, someone else will. And you're robbing that person of being treated like a freaking ruby mm -hmm. or if you're with someone and you're a girl and you're dating a guy and you don't find him attractive and he knows that and he knows, man, my wife doesn't find me attractive or my, sorry, my, my girlfriend doesn't find me attractive. Don't rob him of being with somebody who thinks he's a good looking guy because I do, I do think that does manifest in the relationship. Yeah. Somewhat. Uh, now attraction is not everything because beauty is fleeting. Mm -hmm. Charm is deceptive. Um, and we're going to look old one day, but I do think in that beginning phase of the relationship to ignite the heart, you, I do think it's important to be able to look at your person and go, man, uh, yes, there are other attractive people out there, but this person is beautiful to me. Yeah. I think that's so important. It doesn't matter if everyone thinks you're attractive. I think it matters if your spouse or your partner thinks you're attractive. And it's going to ebb and flow. There, yeah. there are seasons where you find me more attractive in a certain day, if I'm tan a certain way, but you can't rely upon those feelings no. of attraction. But at the base level, at the surface level, you are attracted to me. Yeah. And I do think if you are dating someone and they're perfect in every way, but you're not attracted to them, I would just pray, Lord, help me be attracted to what you're attracted to. And, pr and if that comes from like a spiritual level of like set, all of a sudden you look at them one day and you go, oh my gosh, wow. I am yeah. so attracted to them. I think that can happen. But I, I don't feel like, okay, two things here. You want to make sure their character is the most important thing. Because again, looks are going to fade. They're going to get old. They're going to annoy you sometimes. And you've got to rely on your character and their character in those tough times. But you also don't want to force yourself to like somebody. So like, yes, you can pray for God. I, I want to be attracted to what you're attracted to. And I definitely think that I've seen some really cool relationships off of that. But if you're just like, really, you just cannot see it. I would not want you to marry someone that you're just like, Oh, when I close my eyes and I twist my head. Yeah, they're cute. I, I feel like you don't want to force yourself. No. And I think that's where we've gotten wrong in the church. We've kind of told people that it doesn't matter to a point to where you can just marry anybody. Yeah. And I'm like, 
I, there were plenty of parts in the Bible where it did point out physical attraction mm -hmm. and that's subjective. Physical attraction is subjective to who, who is viewing it. Just like I, to be honest with you, I don't think palm trees are, I, I like palm trees, but like, I don't, I don't look at them and go, that's so beautiful. Uh, but some people look at palm trees and go, wow, I love yeah. a good palm tree. And, <laughs> and so don't let other people's viewpoint of beauty dictate yours. But I do think it does help. And it's, it's a thing that God created. He did mm -hmm. create beauty. He created, you know, big toes to, to lean a certain way on purpose, you know, cause that big toe might, someone might mm -hmm. look at it and go, that's the most beautiful. That's my big toe. That's my big toe. Yeah, I feel like... So find your big toe and run with it. Amen. I really do feel like, though, like, someone may not find you attractive, but someone else is going to look at you and be like, what a freaking babe. And yeah. if this man is not gassing you up all the time, telling you how much he loves you and is attracted to you, like, someone else will. And, like, I've been in relationships where, like, I knew I was not that person's type, and I never got that affirmation I was looking for because I was not what they were looking Dude. for. And so it's kind of tough. So I, I, it's so nice being with you, feeling like this is like I'm his dream girl I had an ex who didn't who didn't find me attractive or like at least was trying to change me mm -hmm. and honestly would make me like change my clothes um and would say hey I want you to shave uh shave uh, she wanted me not to have a beard and I'm like I loved my beard and I didn't want to shave so I found myself shaving for her and I found myself mm -hmm. she didn't like that I lifted weight so I was like trying to get like skinnier for her um, and so I think it's so important not to do that. Don't do don't that. Change yourself. Gosh, don't do that to your significant other. Like don't let someone do that to you. And so I would just say that don't try to change yourself. Don't try to change someone else mm -hmm. because someone else will look at that person and go, that person is so beautiful to me. Amen. So last question uh, guys, go subscribe to our uh, Patreon. It's just $9 a month. We do an extra two podcasts a month there. Janine's, and a live Bible study. Janine's going to go live once a month for an hour. Uh, and we just post chats in there all day. It's a little small community. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's we just, so fun. Yeah. And so we are going to shout someone out from our Patreon to answer one question in here. So yeah, um, that's the perk. If you join our Patreon, we will be picking your questions. We'll... You guys get to ask us more things and just get a little bit more uh, close up to us in our relationship. So Madison Ross, shout out to Madison Ross. Uh, she asks, how did you work on leading well as a man in your relationship before marrying Janine and also daring you were dating her? Yeah. That's a great question. Um, for me, I am, this is what I would look for in a man. Is he willing, is he wanting to always grow? And is he curious as a man to look up to other men and wondering how they got to where they are at and aspiring to be someone who is greater than they currently are? And that was an attitude and a posture that I have always just had because of my father. And so like moving to Texas, like I was grinding, I was selling solar panels door to door. I had a job here. I was working here. I didn't go to college at the time there. I was just like, I was on my entrepreneurial grind and just trying to listen to every podcast and feeding up as much information and studying the stock market, learning how finances work. And through that allowed me to adapt a lot of characteristics that as a man, you need to be able to lead a family. So as a result of doing a lot of those things allowed me to walk into a, a mature, a more mature state that could allow Janine to feel comfortable with being with me, even though I was mm -hmm. four and a half years younger, uh, spiritually, I was surrounded by men who were older than me, who also were wiser than me, who were more godly than me, honestly, guys who would go, you're hanging, you're going out with her, mm -hmm. bro. What, what do you mean you're going out with her? You just... You just said this is the girl you want. This girl contradicts that. She just she wants to have fun, and this isn't going to end well. This is a this is a bad decision. Mm -hmm. Men who are keeping me out of trouble because you can have a guy, you can be a guy who is wants to be as godly as possible. There are things that are going to come your way to throw you off the course. And I had guys just constantly had an anchor on me, and they'd pull me down 
when mm-hmm. I would get off, you know, course and, and I would have to sit for a second and be like, okay, I'm not doing what I need to be doing. Uh, and so that, and then daring our relationship. Can I say something? Really yeah, nice? yeah, yeah. I feel like a man that leads well is a man that's led well. So you were led by other men and they were like kind of coaching you and you were being able to follow them. And so I think that was important to me is that I knew you could lead me well because you were being led. It's so funny now they all those guys look at me and they just like, it's like the, uh, I'm like the little kid who grew up in a way <laughs> where they're just like, they're just like high fiving. Cause they remember uh-huh. where I was at before. I was just like a young guy who was so naive and just like full of energy. And, um, I'm really am a different man than I was even like, gosh, three years ago. Um, and then during our relationship, I think how I was able to like walk into the husband, like walk in, I don't even almost relate to that guy. Cause I'm now a husband. I've had to mature, like being a husband. I feel like you mature more in a week. It's like in a month than you do in like dating. Mm-hmm. And again, same way, like <clears throat> having guys alongside of the way while we're dating and never always coming forward with the still the things that I'm struggling with as a guy. And, but you let in, yeah. you let so well purity spiritually led us to church to yeah. you led us to holiness. You never pushed my boundaries. Purity I mean, is a huge you one. did so, so amazing. You never forced me to do anything. Yeah. Um, yeah, you were awesome. Thanks babe. Oh my goodness. That was so good, babe. Thanks, babe. I'm so that was fun. impressed. That was like one of my favorite podcasts. Honestly, same. Yeah. I love that. I love just hearing you also talk. So that was awesome. Okay. To close out, you guys, we are going to be doing, of course, Reddit, Reddit on, on Reddit. Reddit. Oh. Oh. Okay. This one's a pretty short one, and I think it has some tea in it. My girlfriend lied about her last relationship and why she lives alone. Do I break up with her? My girlfriend told me she was in her last relationship for five years. They broke up because he was lazy and messy and pretty much lived like a slob. I thought this was kind of weird. This was kind of a weird, weird reason after knowing each other for five years. Turns out she cheated on him. She lives alone far away from her hometown with her friends and family. She told me she moved to see new places. She failed to mention she lived in her new place with her boyfriend at the time who was getting, she was getting engaged to, which she also never told me. She said, it's none of my business. Do I break up with her? Yes. Why? I think this girl's kind of a liar, and I don't think that's good to start your relationship off relationship off of lies. I agree. Period. I think that's it. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty simple. I just feel like it's kind of shady to pretend that something didn't happen or give false reasons or whatever, because clearly she wants to hide something, or maybe you want to seem like you appear better to somebody. Yeah. Um, and I feel like I didn't I, lie to you about anything in my past. So. I feel like you should ask why. Yeah, she did that and get to the root. And then from there, you can make a more. It's like if she lied because this guy was, you know, but there's really not a good reason to lie. I feel like. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Lying in general. Just, I feel like you should get down to the bottom of it and decide what he wants to do. For? I don't know how long they've been dating, but it seems like she's been lying about a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Lots and lots of things. Run. Run for the hills. <laughs> Anyway, you guys, that was such a good episode. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please share it. Let us know. Tag us. We'll like to repost and comment back. Join our Patreon if you want to have your question in the next episode or see what other extra episodes we have going on. We have more of this stuff in our Patreon. That's linked down below. You're going uh, going live. um, March 11th. March 11th. My first Bible set is coming up March 11th. Let's go. We're going to Nashville this week, and I'm really excited so you guys can see what we're up to. I got to go to Bible study. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Maybe there's something controversial you said in here. If you're a guy watching, let us know if you agree with this. And guys, I am not an expert. I, I'm a, I'm a man who wants to be as godly as possible, but I get things wrong a lot. (laughs) And, uh, yeah, anything I said, do not hold against me in court. (laughs) Uh, we love you. This was so fun. So fun. We'll see you guys again next Tuesday for another episode of Happy and Healthy. Until then, stay happy and healthy. Bye. Bye.